Works his way up the wall, now back and out to center. It was a tough pass for Holbauer to Hansel. Bouncing puck uh, carried in by Johnson again. Picked up Dubinsky. A wrister. That one hit Johnson on the way through. Johnson again down low. He's being a little more offensive minded here in this game. Now Gornel in the corner. Turning to the far side. Gornel picks it up on the other side. And he'll steer it right back down low. Lepinen jumps on it there. Plenty of room behind the Yale goal for our kind of work right now. As it'll be turning with it. Lepinen. Shot coming. Blocked over the top of the net. Now Laka picks it up on the other side. Engineers with plenty of zone time early in this game. We're under nine minutes to go in the first period. Laka at the blue line. Ships it down low. Zeke. He, he battles there with Lillibridge. Kicks it back to the corner. Laka's there. Scrapping along the wall. Pop to the point. Picked up Dubinsky. He'll chip it right back in. Kicked at there by Johnson. That's Kyle Johnson of Yale. Stolen away by Dubinsky. Fed down low. Around the net. Centering feed was broken up. Picked up by Samick just off the bench. T.J. Samick in the near corner. Carrying back towards the half wall now. Still Samick on it. Samick drops it there for Riley. Riley looking for a lane. Still Riley carrying near side. Riley walking in. Pulls it back. Thre uh, tries to thread it across to Dubinsky and does. But he's on his backhand. He works it back down low. To the near side. It's wrapped towards the point. And out of the zone. Picked up by Dubinsky. Shot back in. As Kaspersky will knock it down there. Eight minutes to go, first period. We apologize if you're trying to watch on RPI TV. There's a giveaway and a chance there for Jerry. Apparently, we're just live here if you're watching the stream. We've been there the whole time if you're on WRPI, the preferred method here. Now, walking in, Polino on his backhand turns back towards the near corner. Back to the point. That one goes through Babichuk all the way back to Savory. And he'll have to hold on to it there. He'll quickly steer it up ice. Played by Polino. Shot off the boards for Morello. Morello ahead. Jerry jumps on it there. Billy Jerry in the near corner. Turns away from some pressure from Hall. Back to the point. And again, Babichuk can't keep it in. Corey Babichuk back to get it. Goes D to D for Ferner. Down the middle. Good connection to Jerry. Tips it into the zone. Sweezy's there. Throws it right off of Jerry. And RPI keeps it in. Then it hits the Zamboni door. It eludes Morello there. Shot around to the near side by Lindstrand. Pinching is Johnson again. Out of the corner, Polino back to the point. Billy Jerry, he'll fire one to flex off a stick and into the netting, and we get a stoppage in play. 7.04 to go, first period, no score, RPI and Yale. All right, I'm going to make a little bit of a weird analogy right go for now. It. Um, so in baseball, you know how you can bat around the lineup? It's pretty cool, you know, you bat, start off the inning. I know, where you're, you I know where you're going. So I noticed uh, Johnson was out for a shift, and then he went off, took, and then they had the two other pairs out, and then he was back on for another shift, and he's back in the off. Offensive zone and the puck is in the offensive zone the whole time. So, yeah, like a cycle around. Yeah, so a little bit of a cycle. Yeah. So it seems like the, they were able to change lines uh, and stay in the offensive zone at the same time. Right. So when, when the forwards and are, are you know the puck's kind of staying in the same place, but the players are changing, cycling. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah. A cycle around is what you're kind of. Yeah. But I, 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 no, I've never seen them do been, been able to go through a full like. Right. Full no, line. you're right. No, that's uh, yeah. Basically, has to be you know 30. 45 seconds a shift. Yeah. So it's about you know a minute and a half. Minute and a half. That's minute and a half. Two minutes. Yeah. Of offenses on time. And even when uh, Babichuk missed those two point uh, uh, clears up to the point there where they went, went past the blue line. Um, when they got when they went back down to the RPI uh, defensive zone, they were able to get it right back up because Yale was changing themselves. So because they were so um, sort of just gassed from from chasing the puck in their own zone that they had to get off the ice. So that gave RPI plenty of time to get right back up and uh, get the puck in cleanly, not just have to dump and chase. So pretty, pretty cool. And if they can keep that up, they're certainly going to generate some scoring chances. Certainly more chances to come. I haven't had a ton of them so far. Good play at the line again by Mashey. And Yale is just uncharacteristically is a shot by Mashey's right on Kaspersky. Takes a look at his defenders there. Kind of a glare there is to say, take care of the puck, guys. We're not breaking it out at all. They're just giving it away, and RPI's taking advantage by getting six shots in the first, uh, you know, two thirds of this period. Yeah. Face off coming up to the right of Kaspersky. It'll be Evan Smith on the draw against Tour Linden. RPI's done a great job in the circle this year. They lose this one, though. Yale to center, chipping it in. Mashey over to get it. Brian Mashey behind his own goal, gets double teamed, lost the puck there. Fed back to the blue line for Sweezy. One-timer redirected just wide. A chance there for the Bulldogs. And we picked up by Burgess on the other side. It was just deflected off the side of the net. Now Burgess 
precariously just throws it out of the zone cross ice and it does make its way out and all the way down. Uh, now a near giveaway again that time it was uh, Sweezy or uh, uh, Tobacco rather. Now he has it for Yale. Brandon Tobacco freshman from Woodbury New York fed near side for Hall. Hall a uh, draft choice of the Boston Bruins now a good move in the middle Welsh is shot that one turned away. And now Welsh again back to the point. Here's Kemp down low shot off the pipe. Oh what chance there it was Pearson who rung it off the iron. And now it will be carried along on the near side half wall best chance for Yale. Comes on that shot that hit the inside of the right post and went off the left side. And we remain scoreless 545 to go centering pass. Oh a right pass saved by Savory. Tremendous stop right there. To keep this one tied and now moving ahead. Ashbrook on the breakaway. Oh, Kaspersky makes the save with the glove. Chances both ways. We stay scoreless. And now Welsh goes down in his own zone. Played there by Babichuk. Babichuk on the move. Stick handling. Almost deked himself out of his shoes. It'll be played by Lockett at center as the Bulldogs clear. Now Babichuk again. Moving down the middle. Babichuk stick handles into the zone. Stops at the half wall. And he tried to play it backwards. Nobody there. He's the defenseman. Now back comes O'Neill. Chance for a two on two. O'Neill backdoor feed. Oh, Savory. Another right pad stop. He tussles there. He gives a shove to Stevens as the puck comes back the other way. Here comes Zeke with a shot right on. And finally, we get a stoppage as Kaspersky holds on to that shot. 4.49 to go in the first. Shots are 8 7 RPI. We get chances at both ends. Big time saves it both ways. There's Saber with the right pad, and he had Kaspersky denying Ashbrook on the breakaway. Yeah, so the energy certainly has picked up here tonight. Uh, both teams really are starting to get back at it now. And after RPI had all that zone time that we talked about, they sent out the, the Smith brothers line, Mitchell Smith and Evan Smith, who always seemed to, Evan Smith is a captain actually, and they always seem to really just lay the hammer into. Uh, when they're out there and uh, they create scoring chances by being aggressive on the forecheck and they certainly got that there with that shot off the pipe. I don't, I don't think it was either one of them that shot it, but they were certainly involved in the play and then RPI taking advantage of uh, Yale sort of overspreading itself and finding um, Tristan Ashbrook there on the breakaway. So en the energy has actually and they always seem to really just certainly has. Uh, uh, we have one final score uh, from ECAC play today. Uh, Colorado College beat Princeton 7 2 down in New Jersey. They certainly got that there. Other that scores Colgate leads Dartmouth in league play 1 0. Cornell over Harvard 1 0. And Union leads Brown 2 0 in Schenectady. We are scoreless here with 4.49 left in the period. And a draw to the right of Colin Kaspersky. Or Corbin, excuse me, from China Township, Michigan. Out of the draw, O'Neill just plays it right through the middle, and RPI picks it off and moves it back in. Pulling up is Polino at the far point. Fed across to Johnson. He'll throw it on goal. Redirected. Oh, a chance for Jerry. It was swept away. Good defensive play at the last moment. As Jerry was on the doorstep, ready to stuff home a rebound. Bulldogs clear it out and all the way down. Back comes Hallbauer near side for Johnson who dumps it in. First one to it. Gonna be Lindstrand or he'll shoot it far side. Stick handling and moving it ahead is Wooding into the zone. Evan Smith trying to jump on it. Gets run into by Babichuk. Played back to the point. St. Ivany. He goes D to D along the blue line. Spun deep by Sweezy. Tie up there. Smith. Loose to the corner. Ferner takes a look. The sophomore out of Dakota Dune, South Dakota, moving ahead to the Yale line. They turn it around quickly to back in. Into the RPI zone is Smith. Pulls up at the far half wall. He'll throw it down low. Bouncing puck eludes Wooding. Picked up there by Mashey. Mashey up ice, takes a hit, but finds Burgess. Burgess trying to slide into the zone. Takes a hit. Puck comes free. Wooding has it. Now skating with it is to back in. He'll make a move at center before dumping it in. Savory out of his net to play in the far side corner. Finds Riley down the middle. Good connection to Tour Linden. A little backhand saucer pass for Lampin and they move it ahead. Neat passing play there by the engineers. Cross ice feed off the wall. Ashbrook picks it up, drops it off for Gornel. Gornel a shot that's blocked down right back to him in the near corner. Mike Gornel 
Senior transfer out of Irwin, Pennsylvania, back for Ashbrook, who had a breakaway chance moments ago. Ashbrook goes down, lost the puck, thrown away by Kemp. Yale will break the center three on three and dump it in, and they're going to pull this one down for icing. As they say, that it looks like Paleka was not across the line. 2.55 to go. RPI, RPI will get an offensive zone draw, and a group that was trying to change is not going to be allowed to. Keith Elaine, they're not happy about that, but. Uh, so those are the breaks. Yeah, it's sc still scoreless here at the field house, but Jake Johnson continues to stay active, creating several, sc creating another scoring chance just moments ago. Uh, he's been, it's been noticeable in his, how much he's jumped up in the play in the, in the among, along the half boards and the lower boards in the offensive zone tonight. And Dubinsky gets kicked out of the faceoff dot. Now Laka will be in there to take it uh, against. Uh, Will Diorsi, who's not a center either, and it's Matthews who comes away with it. The seventh defenseman for Yale. Out of the draw, there's a hit thrown. Puck picked up by Hallbauer. He shoots it up the wall into the or near the Yale bench. This is going to be icing on RPI. 2:43 left in the first period. No score. Shots are 10-7. Engineers, and we got a draw coming up in the RPI zone now. So yeah, Yale gets a quick face-off win there and is able to clear and get the change that they desperately, desperately wanted. Uh, so a little bit of a missed opportunity there, but RPI now looks to get themselves back out of their own defensive zone. Face off in the RPI zone, one straight ahead. Laka lifted out by Dubinsky. This will go out of play, and the St. Heat last touch in the neutral zone, so a break there for the engineers as the face off is at center ice. Yeah, I think they got that correct. It looked like they're right, right at the blue line, so. Face off coming up here at neutral ice. As one by the engineers, TJ Samick off of these Slingerlands, New York native. Jake Morello nearly stolen away by Polino, then Riley coughs it up and moved into the zone. Pretty awkward play, and it goes into the corner. Probably the best uh, anyone could expect from that bit of nonsense at the blue line. But Yale is on the attack. Two Bulldogs fall down, shot and a save, rebound again. That was put just wide on the rebound try. That was Curtis Hall. Now flipped ahead. Polino trying to track this down in the attacking zone. He's one on two. Waits for help. Alexa just dump it in. Tour Linden's there. He gets dumped. And the puck was in the vicinity here, so no. Ooh. Another big hit there by Mashi as they know interference. As Mashi then runs over one of the Bulldogs and got a couple hits in a row, one each way. Behind the RPI net is played by Ferner. But Chuck ahead. Here's Burgess. Stick handling into the zone near side. Lost the puck. Picked up by Mashi. Pops free to Babichuk. Babichuk in the circle takes a shot. Kaspersky a save. Rebound Ferner. And that one hit a body. A slide and blocked by Evan Smith to keep that one away. Lifted ahead by Mitchell Smith on goal from center ice. Held on to by Saber who gets a whistle. Yeah, again, the Evan Smith making a great play there for the Bulldogs. Uh, a beautiful setup there from Babichuk. Able to get him to get it to hit the block and a juicy rebound in front of the goal mouth. But no RPI, or, uh, there was an RPI stick there, but there's also an Evan Smith lay. And 127 to go. We're still scoreless here at the Fieldhouse. RPI is a 11 9 shots advantage. Face off, tap back to the point. A shot there by O'Neill. It's held onto by Savory. Just a quick shot there from the top of the circle there. Savory saw it, but it was again just one of those quick shots kind of like Tor Linden had earlier. And Savory's been more than solid tonight here for the engineers after a bit of a rough weekend last week. Face off. Same play. Loose puck comes free. Now it's out to center on the carry. Far side poked away from Gornel. And go behind the goal. Gornel. Back to Ashbrook. He gets knocked down. Ashbrook trying to find it again and does. Picks a whack there from Sweezy. I don't know what that was. And kept in by Lepinen. Sweezy behind the cage. Shoots it near side. Hallbauer runs through him out to center. Johnson goes into the wall awkwardly with Stevens. They're both down and Lepinen comes away with it. He was the last man back. Lepinen. Oh, give and go there. Hallbauer and Lepinen. Drop pass, Laka, shot was blocked. Laka gets it back, shot! That one hit something, might have been Kaspersky on the way through. Could have caught him the mask, he was down on the butterfly and the shot was high. 
That popped over the top of the net. Swept into the zone by the Bulldogs. Back to pick it up is Bear. Wrapped to the near side and kept in by St. Ivany. A redirection in front from uh, Smith. That was Evan Smith. He went flying. The puck went over the net into the corner. Penalty coming up here on the Engineers. Going to be a trip. And with 17.1 seconds left in the first period, the Bulldogs will go on the power play. Yeah, Through. Engineers getting a little sloppy there. The um, maybe them. trying to get a little reparations after uh, uh, Tristan Ashbrook got just shoved into the into the boards uh, by Billy Sweezy, who's 6'2", 215 pounds. So pretty big, powerful guy. And uh, Tristan Ashbrook certainly got to feel it. Uh, but the RPI penalty kill is 88% on the season, which is second among ECAC hockey teams. Pretty good. Clarkson's the only team above them. They're like 92 or 93%. Which a lot is that crazy, crazy good goalie transfer that they got. Face off in the zone. St. Ivany down low. A quick shot from a tight angle was turned away. That was Welsh. Now back to the point they go. And now RPI is able to clear with one second. That'll do it for the period. RPI survives the first 0-0 after one here with Yale. They had spells where they were dominating play, uh, but uh, a post one way, a breakaway for RPI. An evenly played period, probably safe, uh, uh, sure that it's it's tied no matter what the score after one. Uh, probably the, the correct score at this point. Yeah, no, that both teams are playing pretty even so far here tonight. And I think it, the game is probably going to be won on special teams. Uh, as It certainly seems like Yale thinks that way because they came out roaring on that, despite only there being, there being only 17 seconds on to left in the period for them to go on the power play. They came out just really strong, really powerful, ready to go. Um, so look for them to really try to come out and blitz the engineers um, in, the, in the second period with, with the man advantage. And RPI is going to have to respond to that. They can't can't, they can't be lulled to sleep at all. They're going to have to make sure that they stay, stay alert and stay ready because a, a game that's played this tight is probably going to be one on, on, on the penalty kill and power play. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with our first intermission. Your score after one is Yale nothing and RPI nothing. You're listening to RPI Hockey 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.
Scars, your score after one period of play is still RPI zero and Yale zero as we get set for the second period. We have a couple announcements to, announcements to make. We'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union, which provides the funding for WRPI and all club-related activity of the Institute, including WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. The Rens WRPI is on the... Just a reminder, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org and you can pick up WRPI's broadcast 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so long as WRPI is broadcasting. We will provide the broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that is WRPI.org. WRPI is seeking current RPI students to make live calls of RPI athletics events such as this one. There are opportunities this season to get on the air for men's and women's hockey. For more information or to express interest, contact us at WRPI-sports at rpi.edu. As we get set for the second period, it's Dubinsky, Linden, and Johnson, with Johnson and Ferner out on the penalty kill for RPI. Again, they are shorthanded to start off the period for at least a minute and 43 seconds. Joe, ready to go. It'll be dumped in right off the draw by RPI. And played by the Bulldogs here. Slow moving out of their own zone. Now they finally get a little giddy up in their step. Kemp gets it as far as center, hands it off. St. Ivory will dump it in and lose it. And it's cleared out by RPI's Dubinsky. And they say it hits them on the bench, I think. A little bit of a delayed whistle, but. Faceoff coming up in the RPI zone. 19.34 to go in the second. We're just underway. No score, RPI and Yale. Yeah, RPI doing a great job again because when they first got that power play in the first period, Yale came flying out, ready to ready to try and put the puck in the net. But RPI wins the faceoff, dumps it down, and then forces a slow breakout from Bulldogs. And now they get a change as well. Face off to the left of Owen Savory, the sophomore from Cambridge, Ontario. Trickles behind the RPI cage. Played there by Pearson. Stolen back by the engineers. Riley has it. A little bit of pressure. Turns towards the corner. Backhands it high in the air and all the way down. And a good dump there for RPI. Halfway through this power play for Yale. Not much to speak of it as they'll skate it ahead. It is Jack St. Ivory. Draft choice of the Philadelphia Flyers. So Joe will be watching him carefully. <laughs> Backhanded around the goal. And we picked up by Samick and cleared all the way down. Kaspersky there for it with 40 to go on the power play. And they'll start back up again down the middle. Now a little drop pass. Dante Paleco. Dumped in by St. Ivany. Morello at the near half wall. Tried to go backwards with it. Lost the puck. Kind of trying to shovel it ahead. It's tied up in the near corner. Johnson will try the far side. There's an open point. And all the way down the ice it goes past Lillibridge. That should just but uh, all but do it for this power play. Ten seconds left on it. Lillibridge takes a book. Finds Paleco. He skates past Linden. Shot off the back of the net. Might have hit uh, Ferner there. Now Evan Smith behind the cage, centering pass and a boot. Caroms to the near half wall. Penalty's over. RPI one for one on the kill. Two minutes now into the second shot from uh, the wall, easily sticked away by Savory. The shot came from Lillibridge up into the netting. We'll get another stoppage here. Yeah, the Bulldogs had a lot of trouble getting going on that on that power play there. They just could never really get themselves set up. It seemed every time they got the puck in the in the RPI zone, they engineers were able to double team and dig it out and then flip it the length of the ice. So good job for RPI, but Yale gonna be a little upset with themselves. Face off in the RPI zone. Played behind Shane Bear, senior from Calgary, Alberta. That pass gets by Mashey. Dumped right back in by the Bulldogs. Now the engineers have it again. Fed to the near side, an open wing. Linden tracks it down. He'll spin it deep. Burgess on the chase. Sweezy, the first one there. Lifting uh, the stick there was Burgess, and the puck popped right to the front of the net. Good awareness by Kaspersky. He's able to cover up. Yeah, that was a really uh, creative little play there from Burgess, kind of just flicking his stick there and forcing the puck to go towards Kaspersky. Wasn't really expecting it, so he just elected to cover it up. But a creative play there from the senior from Phoenix, Arizona. 
Face off coming up in the in the Yale zone. Tie up in the corner. Puck comes free. Dubinsky back to the point. Hallbauer shoots it off of Dubinsky. He'll continue it down low into the corner again for Laka. Jacob Laka out of Bratislava, Slovakia. Will cycle. Here's Dubinsky behind the goal. Takes a look on the near side. Fed back to the point. Hallbauer. Hallbauer stepping in. Hallbauer a wrister. Loose in front. Oh, a save by Kaspersky. Point blank on Zeke. Puck still loose and it moves to the corner. Hallbauer was given all kinds of room. Fired into a screen. And now Hallbauer again trying to make a move. Lost the puck. Fed forward. Too far from the intended target. That's Welsh. And it will be not icing here. It's like Johnson was a little surprised by that. Yeah, it looked like Johnson won the race. Now we got a penalty coming up. They're going to get Laka for his uh, apparent hit on Hayden Rowan, the freshman from Pemberville, Ontario, draws the penalty on the RPI sophomore. And the RPI fans are not happy with that uh, bit of events. Actually, it's going to be Johnson with a penalty. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, I, I didn't see what Lockett did. You're yeah, right, it was Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. I guess, had... I guess it was a hit, right? Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. I saw Lockett hit one of the Bulldogs and they went down and the arm went up, but it must have been for something we couldn't see along the wall. Yeah, I think Johnson was just surprised that he was getting rammed into the wall because he definitely won the race right, but it must have hit a stick or something going down the line. I guess so. I didn't see a, a motion for a deflection or anything like that. Yeah. They, just did wait, they just didn't blow a whistle. Anyway, this is cleared by RPI. Right off the draw, stopped by Kaspersky with the glove. He'll settle down and hand it off for Kemp to come back and get. Phil Kemp, a junior, as I mentioned, played uh, on the U.S. National Development Team for arriving in New Haven. Hit there on Pearson. Loose puck picked up by Riley. He'll go across the front of the crease. Samick is there, and he'll feed it all the way down. Kaspersky again will slow things up. RPI's done a good job of immediately kill, uh, you know, dumping the puck out when the puck enters their zone on these now second penalty kill. Officially of this period, first one ended uh, here in the second. 16 minutes to go in period number two. We're scoreless. RPI and Yale tie up in the far corner of the RPI zone. Finally, it comes free to Gornel. Hands off to Bear. Has a little bit of room. He'll skate it ahead. RPI moving it shorthanded, three on three into the zone. As Bear just dumps it in and peels off. Bulldogs will restart there with all five players along the right boards. I think they're changing. I thought it was a, either that or it was a really strange breakout. They are making a partial change. St. Ivany looking for the wraparound, still on the puck, back to the point, into the skates of Paleco, chipped ahead by Gornel. Now RPI will skate shorthanded. Two on two, two on one, a shot and a save. Oh, Morello with a shorthanded opportunity there. He was cut off from moving to his right. Turned into a little bit easier play for the goaltender, but he's able to make it anyway. Now a pass in front and they score. Play broke down, and Dante Paleco takes advantage. His third goal of the year, the junior from Whippany, New Jersey, makes it 1 0 Yale on the power play. As uh, RPI with a big shorthanded chance. You see that sometimes, Joe. A shorthanded chance for a lot of players. Three of them for RPI got forward. Turns into a rush the other way. It looked like RPI had gotten back, but not into position. Paleco was open in the slot, and he buried it. Yeah, RPI was back, and they actually, when they were skating back, it was still three on three. Um, but then the, the Bulldogs were able to push back a little with, with the extra skater and find a nice opportunity there in the slot. And so now the Bulldogs take advantage of the, of the man advantage and go up one zip. Power play goal for Yale. Comes uh, not quite five minutes into the second period. Lifted up the boards out to center. Chase Zeke back to his own blue line. Senior from Avon, Connecticut, works it ahead for Dubinsky, who lost the puck there. Bulldogs take over again. Fed up the near wall by uh, Tobacco, dumped in. And now Johnson takes a hit. Played around behind. Hallbauer taps it forward for Laka. Laka with Zeke breaking. Finds the second man. It's Johnson into the zone. Johnson for Zeke. Zeke makes a move. Drops it back to Binsky. Oh, good set up there. And Dubinsky was denied by the left pad of Kaspersky. Back to the RPI zone it goes. Johnson back to get it in the near corner. Feeds it right back behind for TJ Samick. Samick takes a look. Skates up the far wall. Chips it in 
And he'll chase on his own. Samick with speed. Beats everyone to the puck. It's Matthews who he stepped in front of. Fed up the wall and all the way down. This should be icing here on the Bulldogs. And we will get a stoppage with 14.07 to go. Second period. It is 1-0 Yale on a goal by Dante Paleco. Yeah, and a good response there from RPI after Paleco gives the Bulldogs the 1-0 lead. A beautiful setup there uh, bet for, between Dubinsky and Zeke, just moving the puck, creating some motion, forcing Kaspersky to move his feet and move his padding around and uh, try and create an opening. Defensive zone faceoff win for Yale. RPI able to shoot it back in after it was cleared to center. Lifted along by Stevens, the Carolina Hurricanes draft pick. And senior from Duxbury, Mass. Riley goes D to D to Samick. Down the middle, good connection. Here's Mashey, circle shot. That one deflected wide into the corner. Stevens back to help out defensively. Takes a hit from Burgess. Tie up behind the Yale goal. As slow to get back to the bench is Samick. Behind the play, he gets a, a change. But the Bulldogs do clear. Turned around as they hit a leg. Mashey moves it in now, far side. Ryan Mashey, drop pass. Babichuk, tight angle shot. Shoulder saved by Kaspersky. Cleared to the far corner. Gathered in there by Johnson. Johnson to center ice. Fires in wide of Savory. Gordel taps it backwards. Played there by Ferner, takes a hit. Babichuk into the middle for Linden. Up the wall for Mashey. It was a collision. Two engineers collided. Back the other way goes the puck. Shot into the Yale zone. They're trying to turn it around quickly up the near side wall. Fed off of Gornel, so no icing here as it's lifted up the near side. Ferner ahead. Almost found Leppin, and he was tied up a bit. Now back come the Bulldogs into the zone, centering feed. And they get touched there. Uh, was Welsh on the way through, but couldn't steer it on goal from a tight angle. Fed to the near side half wall. Gornel up the boards. That's broken up by Welsh. Played behind. Stick handling there was Hall, lost it, comes free to Gornel. He'll throw it off the skate of Lepinen, who kicks it to himself and plays it back to Gornel, who dumps it in. Shots are 17-13 RPI, but the Bulldogs lead 1-0. Puck behind the cage. Ashbrook, no. Fed back to the point. Hallbauer, a wrister, and he zinged it over the top of the net. Kemp takes a hit in the near corner. Lillibridge will try the far side, kept in by Hallbauer. Fed, uh, feeds it towards goal. Easy stick save there for Kaspersky. And now right back ahead for Welsh. Welsh dragging it forward. Carried on further by the long reach of Hall. Hall into the zone. Good poke check by Riley. And he gets tripped up by Hall. RPI fans want a penalty. Not going to get it here. Could easily have called a trip there. Now here comes Jerry the other way. On for Morello. Morello steps around a check. Gets held up a bit. Looks like these Bulldogs are asking for a penalty right now. Fed back to the blue line. Tough handle for Babichuk and does. Shot deflected up into the netting. And a stoppage and a faceoff coming up in the Yale zone. 11.25 to go. Second period, 1-0 Yale. You're listening to RPI Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. RPI certainly has carried the play here since giving up the goal here. And I think a lot of that is due to their, their clean breakouts. When you have uh, a clean breakout, uh, it usually involves clean passing, and that's what they've been doing. They've been able, to, they haven't just been shooting the puck up the boards and hoping it finds someone. They've been looking for the first option, and then if that's not there, the second option, and find it, finding it, the man and either getting it right on the skate so he can tap it up to his stick or getting it right on the tape of the stick uh, to the breakout guy and it's allowed for them to get into the offensive zone with possession rather than just a dumping and sort of create some uh, create a cycle get a cycle going get, a sh get, get it up to the point for the defenseman and create some separation and uh, it cre it's creating better scoring chances for RPI than they've had previously so 11 25 to go Yale up 1-0. You're listening to live coverage of men's hockey on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. Offensive zone faceoff time for RPI with Laka, Ziki, and Kinski. Ready to go after the media stoppage here. RPI basketball is in action. They're right up at ECAV right now, Joe. The, women, the women's game's over. Should have a score for you. Uh, uh, Mr. They, won. they won. They beat St. Lawrence. Good. Yep. Good. A great start for them this season. Yep, 5 and 1. Women's basketball 1 and 0 in the league. Face off win here for the Bulldogs as they break to center. Trying to jump it was Riley. Turns it around. And picked up by Zeke. Forward. Onside is Locka, I think. No. Uh, <laughs> Didn't look like it. Up. Yeah. 
didn't look like he was on, but he touched the puck, and we didn't get an immediate whistle, so I was confused, but it was rectified. Yeah, that's not the... Uh, we've had a couple uh, longer whistles, the one where it uh, bounced off a player on the Yale bench. Yeah, I think he didn't see it uh, at yeah. that time, yeah. And then this one right here, so just uh, not, not quick whistles here, but the play. So the draw is moved ahead by Zeke. Tie up in the near corner, fed around behind the cage. Played there by Lindstrand. Puck pops out to center. Dubinsky stops it right at the red line, lifting it ahead. St. Ivan, he was the only Yale player in his own zone, but it went right to him. Carried back in by Ferner. He is hit up high there by Smith. Lindstrand plays it around behind the goal. Good connection down the middle. This is Evan Smith, one one with Ferner. Takes a shot, good block by Ferner. Off the end boards, Ferner lost his stick in the process. And he continues to battle without it in the corner. Gets some help now, as now Riley lost his stick. Lillibridge near side, far side connection, circle shot, blocked again, this time by Linden. Now behind the goal. Smith fanned on the pass. Ferner with his stick back, trying to fight for the puck. It'll be played there by Evan Smith. Back to the point, Lillibridge takes a look, just filters it down low. It'll ring all the way around to the far side, but is past Mitchell Smith. Oh, Locker will shoot it down ice before taking a hit. This is going to be icing here on the Engineers, who a couple were playing without sticks. They'll have to stay on the ice, but at least they'll be able to retrieve, or retrieve their uh, equipment. Yeah. And Babichuk had traded sticks with Linden, because you, know, you give your stick to the yeah. stick ended in the yellow bench. So. Yeah. <laughs> Bizarre. Anyway, I think the ref might have just put it there. Uh, 10, 10 6 to go in the second period. One nothing Yale's on top. Face off in the RPI zone. And uh, Kyle Johnson gets tossed from the dot for Yale. Face off, push backwards. Kicked at by Burgess. No. Babichuk lifts it behind the goal, near side to the corner. One handed by Johnson. Comes right back to him. He'll try again. And now Jake Johnson has it. He goes behind the goal to Babichuk. Babichuk will try the far side, past everybody and down. This will be icing again on RPI. So again, Gornel is going to have to. No. <laughs> RPI tried to confuse the ref and have Gornel be the one to come back on for Laka, but no, Laka was the one who was on the ice, and he'll have to stay on here. So big face off coming up for RPI. They're down the goal and stuck in their own zone right now, and another icing call. Yeah, 9.44 to go. Normally we get the break where they uh, sweep up with shavings along the sides, but not right. the icing. Not on the icing. Here's Lillibridge. Fires it in the air, and this will allow for the change. It was shot directly out of play, or at least uh, deflected. Deflected. It doesn't matter because RPI will be allowed to change here. Yes. And we'll get our media stoppage for that matter. So a break there for the engineers as everything kind of worked out in the end. No chances for the Bulldogs. And a break here and longer one. 9.38 left, second period. Yale with the only goal of the period. Dante Paleco on the power play. Yale's now one for two in the man advantage, and they take advantage of that. Uh, what was a rush against them on the shorthanded, and they were able to bury it in the other end. Yeah, so again, RPI, it's uh, one of those things where you take a risk going uh, shorthanded. And if you, if you do score, I mean, two on one, it's a pretty good chance to take. Uh, you do score, it really sort of breaks the back of the opponent because they gave up a, a shorthanded goal. But then at the same time, if you don't, they're probably going to be running back the other way with lots of numbers. Uh, that wasn't the case there. They were uh, they were skating just three on three, but I think the second chance allowed them to get an extra skater in to the slot area, and Paleco took advantage of it. So we get now we get the uh, the snow crew out to shovel up the shavings on the edges of the ice. And, uh, yeah, you, I wonder if they will let them use the big shovels uh, outside on campus, Perry. No? No. You, you, don't, think, you don't think they do? No, I, I've never seen them. I, I, but those are some big shovels out there. You want to borrow the shovel? I'm sure you could. <laughs> Face off coming up to the right of Owen Savory. Women's hockey trails number seven Clarkson 5 0 right now. They're in the third period up in Potsdam. Sweezy behind his own goal. He'll try at the near side. Bottle up there by Burgess right at the uh, point. Get some help from Riley, but it leaves the zone. Shane Bear over to Riley. Well, Riley will slow things down as uh, the Bulldogs backed off of it. That was Welsh putting the pressure on. Riley dumps it in. 
Played far side. Stopped at the blue line. Kept in for a second by Ashbrook. Now fed ahead. Stolen away by Riley. He skates over the puck. Good play by Mashey. Helping out Riley defensively. But it's kept in at the line. Pearson can't handle that pass. And now Mashey again doing the defensive work behind the goal. Ashbrook spins up the boards neatly for Burgess. He takes a hit. Puck into the zone. Played there by St. Ivany. Some well-timed body checks in this game. It's been a pretty clean game. All things considered, just the one, uh, two penalties against the Engineers. It's going to be icing here. As uh, Evan Smith did his best to try and beat his man down the ice, but Halbauer had a step on him. 8.33 to go in the second. Shots are 18-13 RPI. There hasn't been a whole lot going on recently. RPI was some early chances in this period, but it's been a good defensive battle other than that. Both teams holding strong. Yeah, RPI may be trying to take advantage of this offensive zone face-off here. They got Levin out there with Gornel and Ashbrook, who they've been kind of quiet tonight. Lebanon had a couple good um, chances that, that he created, but overall been a pretty quiet night for that group. But Hallbauer had, had a really strong scoring chance earlier in the period. Ashbrook behind the goal. Carrying there. Feeds it right back down low. We get a whistle and a penalty, I think. It's going to be a slash. And it's going to go on Ashbrook. Interesting. It's like he, Ashbrook had the puck, so he, it must have been after he lost it. Yeah. He whacked, whacked at it. He doesn't look too happy about no, it. No, no. Third power play coming up for Yale. They're one for two. Patrick Polino, one of RPI's assistants at home, is having a discussion with uh, Tori Carissimo. He and Joe Carasoni. Are the referees Rick Lembo and Jordan uh, Pedarino are the linesmen today? Slashing on the Mantistique, Michigan native. So RPI back on the PK. Face off win for the Bulldogs, and they fire a shot. Good block there by Jerry. I had to test the stick, make sure it wasn't broken. On that play. Back to the far point it goes. Diorsi now. Paleco a shot right on. Looking for number two. And good positioning there by the Savory to make the stop. He holds on to that. Yeah, Bulldogs able to really set up there on that chance. I mean, just 15 seconds into the into the power play, but they were able to set up and establish themselves in the offensive zone, which is what they wanted to do last time. Face off in the RPI zone. Just 14 seconds off of the power play so far. Puck moved backwards, picked up by Riley. He'll turn back behind the goal for some help. He'll throw it off the near glass and all the way down. Watch out there, everybody. Linesman Paterino had a duck as well. Lillibridge to play for the Bulldogs from behind his own goal. Tries the near side for Paleco. Trying to skate past Gornel. Gornel breaks it up and clears. Kaspersky stops it there. Back in they come, far side. Come the Bulldogs, O'Neill. Stolen away. Johnson will clear it out. It's been one and done here for. Uh, these Bulldogs on this particular power play moving into the zone. They're able to get it across the line, but each time the engineers immediately steal the puck and clear it. Now here's Pearson down the middle. Works to the near point, throws it down low. It'll wrap all the way around. Welsh is there. Back to the point. St. Ivany off for Kemp. Kemp dumps it to the far corner, goes behind the cage. Stolen away by Johnson. Tap to the far side, Linden. He can't keep it away. Now a broken up at center. Here comes Morello, short-handed. On the breakaway, Morello! Off the post! He rung it off the left iron. Back come the Bulldogs again. Here's Hall. He'll pull up in the near circle. All the way back to the corner with it. Now to the point, St. Ivany. Far side connection for Kemp. Now spinning with it, Pearson, jam try, and it trickles in off of Welsh. It's a power play goal, and once again, the Bulldogs capitalize after an engineer's rush shorthanded. It's a power play tally this time uh, for Tyler Welsh, his fourth goal of the season. It's 2-0 Yale. So another broken play 
that the Bulldogs capitalize on there. As we'll look at the replay, a spinnerama move there. Just gets it in front for Welsh. Savory doing his best to get to the other side. But now you kind of got to ask yourself the question, if given the opportunity on the, on the penalty kill, to get a shorthanded, do you go shorthanded or do you just kind of circle the puck? Because, no, I mean, you... there's no way you can't go for that. It, it, he had a wide open lane. There's no way Morello doesn't go for but that. But now, twice, the engineers get cursed by it. <laughs> get cursed by it. Yeah, that's the same question I hear when you hear, can you can you decline a power play when your team's struggling with a puck? <laughs> the answer is always no, Joe. Yeah. You don't decline a, you don't just, you don't decline a shorthanded breakaway, and you, you don't mess around with Jim. But, uh, no, it's just something you don't do, and uh, yeah, it's how, just, how unlucky it was Morello to hit the yeah, ball. Yeah, I mean, it's just, like you said, very, very unlucky. And both of these goals, Savory no chance. I mean, it was almost fanned on. It was a good defensive he play. He almost gets the stick. R right, Riley had his stick on the ice trying to keep it out, and uh, just unlucky for these engineers right now to be down 2 nothing. On the positive side there, it means that you're generating chances. You're not giving up a whole lot, especially five on five. The Bulldogs have done almost nothing outside of the one, the post they hit back in the first period. That's been their only real five on five chance that I can remember. Uh, uh, so it's one of those things where you have to kind of just tough it out and say, all right, they got a couple of uh, not cheap power play goals, but you know, ones that you normally have covered. And we're back to action here. Two nothing Yale with six and a half to go in the second. You just put those behind you. Try and get the next one. Because if RPI scores the next goal, you know, it's anybody's game. If this period or in the third, still the whole period left. Glove down the blue line by Lepinen. Across. Here's Ashbrook a shot. Save made. Rebound loose. Swept to the corner. Good defensive play by Tabak in there. Now Gornel kicking it to himself behind the cage. Still Mike Gornel. Back to the point. Johnson. Near point Hallbauer. Hallbauer up the wall for Lepinen. Lepinen tries to go back to Hallbauer, just flings it to the far side corner. It was open for a moment. Now Sweezy and Ashbrook are there. They tie up to back into the near side. Shoots it off the glass. Kept in by the engineers. Here is Ashbrook trying to center. Uh, could have taken a look there. Now Lepinen was bumped into. Picked up by Laka, just given away. Laka behind the goal. All the way to the far corner goes Jacob Laka. Still Laka on the move. Hands it off the point for Babichuk. Right back down low. Picked up by Ashbrook in the corner. Ashbrook turns towards the far circle. Now Ashbrook hands it off to Babichuk again at the point. Far point, near point, Ferner. Fires a shot, was blocked out to center. Gathered up by Babichuk there. He'll backtrack a bit before feeding it across for Laka. Laka in the center circle, dumps it in. Off of Kaspersky into the corner. 5.15 to go, second period, 2-0 Yale. Kept in Ferner. Laka up the near side wall. To the corner he goes, trying to center, hit a skate, gets it back. Laka again, turns and shoots Kaspersky right into the glove, and he holds on. You know, I'd love to see the engineers on a power play here tonight. The penalty, the, um, excuse me, at, at even strength, they've been just swarming, especially after giving up goals, they've been swarming just, Bulldogs have been chasing them the entire time. And if given the man advantage, I'm sure they would only increase that. And maybe they'd be able to create some separation in front of the net and screen Kaspersky, because he's seeing the puck well tonight. Certainly is. Face-off win for the Bulldogs. Cleared out to center. Chipped up the boards. Dubinsky backtracking, picks it up, shoots it off the wall, but gives it away. Walking right in, O'Neal to the net. Oh, he put it, he dangled it right across the goal mouth. If, it's almost as if he let it go. It might have gone into the net, but he touched it one more time, and it went danced right across the goal line and out on the other side. RPI catches a break there. As it was kind of a blind giveaway for Dubinsky, He's making his first appearance in a few weeks now. Now lost its center, back into the zone. It's going to be offside here. 4.29 left in this second period. 2-0 the Bulldogs lead on a pair of power play goals. Yeah, really good chance there. Just like you said, just went right across the goal mouth there. Um, and interesting, interesting turn of events. But 4.29 to go. Yell up 2-0 as we get a stoppage here. Again, you're listening to live coverage of men's hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. So, uh, yeah, Joe, we have uh, some excitement. Yeah, here's your buddy up there. Yeah, Noah. Let's get a picture for him. Gonna hurry up. Yeah. I bet he doesn't even know. No, he probably doesn't. There we go. You got one? Yep. Uh, for the memory books, at least. Yep. 
But yeah, no, he did have a pretty good year, so that Noah. No, right. Oh, yeah. country all American and a regional run one, one, one the Atlantic region. Yep. Uh, so RPI now three and oh, or excuse me, has been had the individual winner at the at the Atlantic Regional Championship for the last three seasons. Who were, who were the three? He got Grant, Grant, Grant and Noah. Oh, Grant two in a row. Yeah. Well, Sean was undefeated yeah. actually until regionals. Oh, wow. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Sean was he hadn't lost a race all season last year until. Both full Connors are now graduated, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to see other guys step up, Joe. Yep, and we had our best finish as a team this year at Nationals. There you go. It's not about individuals, right? Nope. Face off here. Moved into the RPI zone. They tie up in that far corner. A little over four to go in the second period. See if the engineers can get one here. Paleco out of the corner. Tried to center. It was broken up. Picked up by Johnson. Jake Johnson takes a look up ice. Feeds it up the wall. Touch past Morello. Pass Polino. Turn back around quickly. And let it ride. That should be icing. No, they wave it off. It was not touched by anyone. Anyway, Johnson trying to center for Yale. Pop free. Another giveaway. Just loose in the slot. Someone's got to track this down. Now it's a chance for a four on two. Jerry carries in far side. RPI hits the line there. Jerry trying to walk his way in. Feeds it down low. Hit a stick. Karen was behind the goal. Turned around by the Bulldog. Back comes Pearson ahead. Breakaway chance. Lillibridge and a blocker save as Lillibridge just turned on the Jets there, kind of snuck in behind the RPI defense. But a blocker stop by Savory keeps us a 2 0 game. Back out comes RPI Polino. Lifting along after crossing center. RPI will change as it'll be Sweezy to play far side. To back in near side off of Pearson in deep. Behind the goal it goes. Bear, he'll try the near side. Wrap pass Burgess. Kept in the blue line by Sweezy. Slaps it back down low. Wrapped around to the far corner. Played there by Mashey. And now played ahead. Here's Burgess on the carry. Has some room. Skating across the zone. Tried to pull it back. Poked away. Picked up there by Hall. Curtis Hall up the boards. Pearson latches onto it in the far side of the RPI zone. Takes a bump from Riley. Poked again by Riley. Taken over behind the cage by Teddy Wooding. And stolen right back, however, by Linden, who avoids a hit and plays it behind for Bear. Now backtracking is Riley on the far side. Back to Bear. Shane Bear takes a look. More relentless forecheck pressure from the Bulldogs as the engineers clear to center. Get a partial change as St. Ivory dumps it back in and chases on his own. St. Ivory gets to the puck and hit the Zamboni door. He elects to just play it behind, or it's controlled by Riley. Man breaking. They'll try the near side Burgess. Touch pass back to Linden. Engineers going with the more. Conservative puck control. Uh, yeah, right, St. Ivory, of course, since it's, did I say Ivory? Yeah. Yeah, well, thinking about uh, piano. <laughs> 201 to go. Bulldogs really kind of put, put, <laughs> put in a move here uh, on the engineers here late in the late in the second period. They've really controlled the play in the last couple of minutes. RPI has had trouble changing. But they're back in their offensive zone for the moment. Two minutes left in the period. Face off in the Yale zone. And a whistle. And something's getting tossed from the dot here. It's going to be a bulldog. No more Hayden Rowan. We'll send Kevin O'Neill in, the junior, who is from Latham, played for the Madison Capitals in the USHL. Sure has some family here. Shots are 22 16 RPI. But they trail by two. Clean win back to the point. Babichuk, wrist shot coming. Kaspersky makes the glove save and holds on. Engineers are trying to get a screen in front of him. Lepinen was in the vicinity. He looked like he saw that one pretty well. Yeah, I think that's going to be their best chance here because he's he's been seeing the puck even when they go mo with a lot of motion in front. So I think there's just the best chance is just going to be to screen and try and get a shot shot in from the slot area. There's one back by Ashbrook, but in the air and past Babichuk. Engineers have to move back to their own zone to get it. Big hit thrown by Stevens on Ferner, trying to disrupt things. It'll be played around to the far side. Now knocked to the ice. Shot ahead by Ashbrook, intercepted. Ashbrook gets it back and tries the far side. Nobody home. Sweezy fires it back the other way. Stick handling at center is Pearson into the high slot. Makes a move. Lost the puck. Carried on further by Hall in the far side corner. Hall stops there. Plays it behind himself. Spinning away from Babichuk. 
Behind the goal, Pearson trying to walk it out in front. He'll turn back towards the back of the net. Still Pearson on the move, looking for a pass. Fires it just wide. That was a feed in front for Welsh. And Tyler Welsh couldn't find the target. Did not catch that uh, shot all that cleanly either. Kind of fluttered wide of the goal. Enters lob it to center where it's loved down by Swayze quickly ahead. Turn back around by Lepinen. Minute to go in the second. 2 nothing Yale. Lift and beat by Lepinen. First one to it. Going to be shot around by Matthews and out to center it goes. Hallbauer. He'll work it up the near side. Tipped in deep by Gordon. Sweezy tries the far side. Evan Smith lost it there. Now chipped to center ice. Mitchell Smith jumps on it. One on one with Hallbauer trying to walk his way in. Pride away. And second man in was Locker to make sure. Now Locker trying to stick handle lost the puck. 24 seconds to go in the period. Touch pass for Dubinsky. Dubinsky moving into the zone. Makes a move. Locka takes over. He scores! Jacob Locka just took it off the stick of Dubinsky. Dubinsky kind of fumbled it, but Locka picked it up and just ripped it to the top left corner. As it's his first of the year for Jacob Locka, and our guys within two to one. And that's a first goal in a while for Jacob Locka. A huge goal for him there. He started off his RPI career with three goals in three games, and then he kind of went silent after that. He had ended up getting one more last season, but finally gets one here. And of course, the fans are all happy. They get free tacos and those. Wow. And, and and we're happy up here because now it's uh it's it's now it's now it's a hockey game. It's uh, anybody's game, like you said. Once they get it within one, it's anybody's game. So it's a one goal game, ten seconds to go in the period. Puck in deep the Yale end. This is as excited as the fans have been in quite some time. Not just in this game. Tap behind by Samick as the period expires. And the engineers find themselves down by just a goal, heading to the third. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Jacob Locke, as I mentioned, picking up the tally, his first of the season. And it's his uh, fifth of his career. Remember, he had goals in each of his first three collegiate games. So yeah. it's really, he only, think about it that way, he only has two goals since then. But yeah, uh, yeah so Locke picking up the tally. And RPI down two to one. Now we'll talk all about that. Yeah, any any thoughts before we go to break here, Joe? Just a really a big goal personally for Jacob Laka and a big goal for RPI because it really it brings them back into this game because it seemed like every time they're going on the penalty kill, Yale was Yale was coming away with a point. And uh, now RPI, who's yet to have a power play, is probably due up for one at some point uh, if if the if the Bulldogs make a mistake anywhere. Uh, so they'll be uh, hungry to get back back out there on the man advantage, but Zeke gets another point on the assist as well. For All right. That goal. We'll take a quick break and be back with our second uh, our second intermission. Your score after two periods is Yale 2, RPI 1. You're listening to Engineers Hockey 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.
welcome back to the Houston Fieldhouse on the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York. I'm Joseph Piscicano, joined by Perry Lascaris, bringing you live coverage of RPI men's hockey on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy as Owen Savory comes skating out and the engineers get ready to go. The score after two periods is Yale 2, RPI 1 as the engineers look to get back into this game after really two uh, kind of broken play goals for the Bulldogs that allowed them to take the 2-0 lead but RPI comes back on a beautiful shot from Jacob Waka in front of the net. Before we get started, Joe, a couple of thank yous. We'd like to thank the Rensselaer Union, which provides the funding for WRPI and all club-related activities of the Institute. Uh, that you can, we like, they, excuse me, including live cover, WRPI's coverage of RPI hockey, football, and baseball. Just a reminder, RPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org, and you can pick up WRPI's broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so long as WRPI is broadcasting. We will provide the broadcast on our internet feed. Once again, that is WRPI.org. Ready to start the third period. As we have a two to one game. Oops. RPI will be skating from right to left. We're five on five as we begin the third. One back here is Shane Bear. Will Riley. Dumped in off of Kaspersky. Loose puck trickling wide. Picked up along the near side. Jerry carrying it back towards the point. Nearly lost it. Now he gave it away. Here comes Kemp, two on one. A shot and a save by Savory. Squeezed the pads together and held on. And a good play there from the defense. I'm not sure if it was Riley or Bear that just kind of spread themselves out and took away the pass so that Savory knew he was going to be seeing the shot. And he saw it all the way right in, right in, to, right in to cover it up. Engineers are coming away with more shots on goal than their opponent this season than they have in years past. It comes with a turnaround. You have to get those numbers in your favor. And right now they're doing it to Yale, although they trail in the game, as you mentioned. Dumped in, St. Ivany will play it behind. Carried on by Lindstrand, now tipped into the RPI zone. High in the air and out of play it goes. We're just 38 seconds into the third period. Two to one, Bulldogs leading. Yeah, good job by the defenseman there being active up in the neutral zone. Babichuk with an active stick to flex the puck away and prevents a clean a pass and a, an entrance into the offensive zone for the Bulldogs. Neutral ice faceoff coming up. RPI this year has outshot its opponents six times. They've been outshot eight times, which is a, a decent ratio. RPI is four and two when they outshoot the opposition. Trying to add to that here, but right now trailing by a single goal. They're out shooting the Bulldogs 25-17 right now. St. Ivany dumps it in. Wraps all the way around to the far point where it's kept in by Mitchell Smith. Now a jam try in front and leaping out of the net is Savory to make the stop and he holds on. Yeah, Evan Smith just backhanding the puck there from behind the net. Sends it into and Savory saw it, jumped on it, and didn't give them a chance to was not was not not going to play that risky. Evan Smith was probably just waiting there, right, ready to pounce. So we're a minute into the third, waiting for the Bulldogs to complete this change. I'm not sure what's taking so long. Now they're ready. Burgess in to take the faceoff here against Evan Smith, and now Smith gets tossed, sending Luke Stevens in. Face-off win for the Engineers. Helped up the wall. Burgess just forcing it there. And now Mashey gives it back. Shot comes from Burgess from the wall. And a glove save by Kaspersky. He may have been headed wide, but he holds on to it anyway. Another stoppage here. Yeah, so really a bit of a slow start here. A lot of stoppages in the period, whether just icing or pucks going out of play. or no, Mostly just pucks going out of play. But no team really able to get themselves set. 
Tour Linden off the offensive zone faceoff win for RPI. Drops it back. One timer hit a stick of Sweezy. It was Burgess. Shot that along the ice. And it looked like it beat Kaspersky as Hallbauer gets hooked a little bit. Puck comes trickling in on Savory. Played back, uh, carrying now. O'Neill takes a shot, blocked in the air, goes over the top of the net. Hallbauer's there. Worked off his stick, however. And move back to the near side, and they score right out in front. They're going to give this one to Hayden Rowan, I think. The freshman from Pemberville, Ontario, makes it 3-1 to one Bulldogs. And I was just Stevens about Stevens was in front of the net. I didn't see what happened there. Yeah, I was just about to say, Savory really looking like in this period he was just not messing around. Flicking anytime the puck came near the net, he was flicking it to the side. Uh, but that puck kind of looks like it snuck through his five hole almost off to get a better look on the replay. But um, again, just another little fluky goal. But the Bulldogs go up by two now. Yeah, Stevens might have redirected that. We'll see who they give it to. Lifted into the corner. Jerry gets there. Billy Jerry back to the point for Samick. Across for Riley. A wrist shot. That one redirected just wide. Tie up along the half wall. Pass Polino. Picked up by Lillibridge. She'll try the far side. Pearson. Shoots it through. Kemp who has to backtrack a bit. Hands it off to Graham Lillibridge. Back to Kemp. Up the far side. It's lifted along in the air. Waiting for it is Samick. Nice play by him to glove it down and slap it ahead with a stick for Jerry. Lillibridge picks it up after the turnover in the offensive zone for RPI. Puck comes loose. Tapped into the RPI zone. Pearson trying to walk in on Ferner. He's all by himself in the offensive zone in the far corner. Pearson twisting and turning. Waits for help. Finally finds a man on the point. Shot comes. Oh! Tip just wide. A chance there for Teddy Wooding as he deflected a shot from the point by Matthews. And now back come the engineers. Ferner into the zone, trying to steer it back towards Zeke. That's picked off. Turn back the other way. Evan Smith into the zone. Takes a shot off the stick of Savory into the corner. Stolen away by Dubinsky. Chips it off the boards, but not out. Actually goes back behind the goal. Here is Ferner. Zeke lifting it ahead for Dubinsky. Just couldn't handle the pass. Or RPI might have been in business again as Laka was just joining the play. As it happens, the Bulldogs have it at center. Bouncing puck, it loses one man, taken over by Zeke, who dumps it in. Matthews back to pick it up for Yale. Behind the goal, hands it off there. Paleko ahead. St. Ivany, nice job to take the body there by Hallbauer. Picked up by Dubinsky. Behind the goal for Johnson. Johnson back to Hallbauer, and Kyle Hallbauer takes a look up ice. Sophomore from Howell, New Jersey, makes a move at center. Tipped into the zone by Gornel. Gornel trying to pick it up on the other side, and he eventually is pried away from him. Picked up by Lepinen. Lepinen trying to get it up the, up the wall for Dubinsky. Can't do so. He's tied up by a pair of Bulldogs. And it finally comes free to Johnson. Twisting and turning, fires a shot right into his man as it was uh, Diorsi, and this will go out of play. 15, uh, 59 to go in the third period. Yale has gotten that goal back. It's three to one Bulldogs. And it really, I, it's, a, it's a deflating goal for RPI, but if they, they got to stay in this game. They can't give up. They got to keep the energy up. And, and now at this point, every shot matters. So you got to make sure that the, the shots are, are, they're not just shots that you're flinging towards the net. They got to have a specific purpose with them. They got to be aimed at a specific spot because you got it. Now, now, they, now it, really, it really counts, and you got to start putting some pucks, pucks in the net. Face off in the Yale zone. Ryan Mashey's in to take this. Up against Hayden Rowan. One back to the point. Bear, a wrist shot through traffic, hit a skate. Didn't have a ton on it. Caroms around behind the goal. Linden battling there with Rowan. Puck out to center. Shane Bear has it again. He'll ring it back in off the glass. Wraps around to the near corner. Phil Kemp out to center, carried on by Stevens. Stevens trying to walk around Bear. Stevens gets there first, taps it behind. Waiting for it was Rowan. Stolen away by Mashey, ahead for Burgess. Burgess on the carry to center ice, lifts it near side, bouncing puck, gets away from uh, Bear. 
Shoveled back into the RPI zone by Rowan as Yale wants to change five, but they will be denied on the icing. They say Rowan was not across the red line. A 15-18 left third period, 3-1 to one Yale. So this is one of those chances where you have to jump on it because 15-18, if you can get it back within one, uh, you, you, you have time to tie it back up. And uh, I think and now you got tired legs out there for the Bulldogs. So this is a chance for it, and RPI gets a change. So now gives it's a chance for them to jump on it. And the Bulldogs have six players out there, so somebody's got to go. RPI is arguing over who it should be. And off the draw, Polino has it, trying to center. Comes free to Babichuk. Poked off his stick, center ice glove down there by Ferner. Yale trying to get its change done now, and they do. At least part of it. Sweezy back to pick it up on the goal. Try the far side glass. Bouncing puck at center. Gathered up there by Morello. They'll try the far side. Polino taps it backwards to Ferner. Brady Ferner takes a look. He's along the far wall, crossing into center ice. Sands it off to Babichuk. Babichuk moves it over center and dumps it in. Near side corner dump. First one to it. Well, trying to half fanning on that clearance was uh, to back it. And now Pearson will try to clear. That's broken up. Again, Pearson. Bouncing puck at the blue line. Kept in by the engineers. Gets away from Morello. Played by Tabakin. D to D for Sweezy near side. Sweezy ahead. On for Hall. Hall bouncing puck past everybody. And this will be icing on the Bulldogs again. 14.25 to go in the third period. Engineers are out shooting the Bulldogs 28-19, but continue to trail by two. Yeah, and that Morello, Jerry, Polino line, we talked about them earlier tonight, but Morello out there looking like a little water bug, just pestering and pestering, and especially on the forecheck, they're creating opportunities and uh, preventing the Bulldogs from breaking out cleanly and forcing that icing. Face off in the Yale zone. And getting tossed in the faceoff dot is Zach Dubinsky. RPI just one and eight when trailing after two periods, trying to buck that trend. Dubinsky moves it down low for Laka. Laka steps through the check of Sweezy. Laka carrying, top of the far circle, turning. Laka, a slap shot, and that's blocked right back to him. Trying to feed it across to Hallbauer, and Laka gets knocked down without the puck. And it's wrapped around behind the goal. No interference on Hall for that. <laughs> it's getting a little bit fishy here. 13.50 to go. We still haven't seen a penalty on the Bulldogs. There have been opportunities, too. We'll give you at least that as it's uh, carried ahead by Dubinsky. Moved into the zone. Zach Dubinsky takes a shot from a tight angle, and Kaspersky makes the save. Slapped out to center. Samick over to get it. Samick tries the near side wall and finds Ashbrook. Ashbrook moving in to the slot. Faked his shot, lost the puck in the end. Lifting a stick was Gornel, but turned back up ice by the Bulldog. Will Riley has it in his own blue line. Fed ahead to Ashbrook. Ashbrook gives it off there. Lepinen, Lepinen to the slot. Lepinen a shot, Kaspersky has saved, no rebound as Riley was there. And then for no reason, Lillibridge whacks him. A penalty should be coming up here. Riley went right up to Kaspersky and stopped. And for whatever reason, Lillibridge thought there was a reason to give him a whack. Well, we've got a hand in the air. So. I don't think it's for a penalty, though. We'll find out. Riley's upset. Riley should be upset. He didn't do anything. Yeah, he, it wasn't like he whacked. It wasn't like he, he didn't, was whacking. He, he, went right went right to, up and, he went right up to Kaspersky and stopped. Oh, they're going to send Riley to the box? That, that is not good. Oh, okay. That's, so. well, that's poor. Oh, well, they're sending two, two, you know, two Bulldogs. Bulldogs to the sure, back. all right. So I guess it was a retaliation. Uh, yeah, I guess it, it wasn't for what he did initially. We'll put it at that. Yeah. He skated right up to Kaspersky, saw there was no rebound, and didn't move. Then he got whacked, and he must have retaliated. Yeah. So I guess I guess you can you can you could give him that penalty. But that's really a RPI. They're going to get a power play here, but Riley's a huge part of that power play. True. Yeah, I think he's got at least. Three goals on the power. I know I've seen at least. Yeah, three. he has three. He's got three on three the power Three of the six, play. yes. So the, and he loves that spot right at the the near side circle, uh, where he can set up his one timer. But so RPI they'll skate five on four, not four on three. Interesting. Is that, do you know the rules behind that? Uh, so yeah, Riley and one of the Lindstrand, I think. Lindstrand are probably going to be uh, 
they're not going to be released till the, after the two minutes of the whistle. Yeah, they'll play five on four. So okay. two are coincidental, and then two are matching. Or, sorry, two is two are coincidental. One. Anyway, it will be five on four. So this is a big opportunity for RPI. First power play of the game. As so here we are, it's Ferner. Back to Burgess. Down low, it's broken up. Puck goes high in the air, but doesn't leave the playing surface. Tapped around to the far side. St. Ivan, he can't lift it out of the zone. Centering pass broken up by Sweezy. And he does enough to clear the center. Burgess. Stick handling. He'll move it in, shoot to the near side. Can they keep it in? No, it's back out of center. Ferner. Back to Hallbauer. Minute and a half on the power play. RPI's first of the game, remarkably. Wrapped around to the far side. Polino threw it off the Zamboni door entrance, and it's picked up and cleared by the Bulldogs. Savory back to play. Hallbauer with it. And he'll slowly make his way up the far side. Hands it off to Babichuk. Engineers gaining speed to the neutral zone. Lepinen in the corner. Shoots it back to the point. Babichuk takes a look before receiving the pass. Across for, ba uh, for Bear. Up top, Babichuk. 52 to go in the power play. Wrist shot deflects over the top of the net. Sat on the back of the cage for a second. Gordel does a nice job to knock it off of there. Now Lepinen trying to track it down. Slap to the near side. Chance to clear. And Babichuk keeps this in. Momentarily, Pearson forces it out. Gordel back to help out in front of his own bench. Now Mashey, stick handling into the zone. Takes it wide to the right. Mashey driving, goes behind, takes a hard hit, stays on his feet. And now Pearson has it pinned up. Poke free to Gornel. Gornel back to the point. Babichuk, cross size for Bear. 18 to go in the power play. Back up top for Babichuk. Wrist shot coming, looking for the redirection. Didn't get it. Lepin was beaten on the play by Sweezy. And Sweezy and the Bulldogs are able to clear. That should do it for the power play. As it is over in three. Hand off there for Jerry. Five on five hockey with 11-10 to go. As Mitchell Smith comes out of the box. Stolen away for a moment there, but carried on by Smith into the zone. Shot comes from a tight angle. It's held on to on the try by Hall. And we'll get a face-off, or excuse me, Stevens. Face-off coming up in the RPI zone with 10.57 to go in the third. Three to one Yale. So RPI unable to convert on the power play. They did, they were able to get control of the puck. They were able to have it in the offensive zone, but really they, it's, the Bulldogs did a good job of keeping themselves in the shooting lanes and kind of preventing any uh, misdirection chances from coming, coming towards uh, Kaspersky. Face off coming up in the RPI zone, falling on it there. Got to be careful not to put your hand on it. Jerry didn't. Nice job by him. Kemp, far side. Looking for a kind of a slap pass there from Lillibridge. It was broken up. To the far side it goes for Paleko. He opened the scoring in this one, his third of the year. Behind the cage, played by Polino. Snap back across. And now Hallbauer tries the near side wall. Polino backs into the zone and fed back the other way. I think he was afraid to touch the puck of it being offside. And instead, it's an icing on the Bulldogs. So they will take that. 10.28 to go, third period. 3 to 1, Yale still on top. Interesting way to get into the offensive zone for uh, RPI, kind of forcing an icing almost. Now, yeah, does the trick. Kevin O'Neill is right now being credited with the most recent Yale goal. If it is his, it is his second of the year. Samick carries it ahead. Played around behind. Pacheco. Or Paleco, excuse me. Gets it as far as center, carried back in by Dubinsky. He's got great hands, Zach Dubinsky. You see why he's such a good face-off guy. Also why he has the three assists. He can move the puck well. Does have the one goal and came in his first game at UMass. St. Ivany down the middle. Finds Stevens who chips it in off the near wall. Stevens gets on it. Help to the far corner. Stevens watched by Riley all the way. Right back down low he goes. Played there by Samick. Zeke. Back into the corner it goes. Samick over to get it. Samick behind. Riley picks it up there. Will Riley takes a look. Goes the short way to Dubinsky. Nine and a half to go in the third. Dubinsky makes a move and another. And he gets lit up there by Smith. 
as it's dumped back into the RPI zone. Now Babichuk down the middle. Linden slips through him. Carried on further by Burgess who kicks it to himself. Handed off for Zeke. Zeke looking for a shooting lane. Ends up handing it off to Babichuk in his skates and now carried back ahead by the Bulldogs. Into the zone comes Smith. A wrister high and wide. Bouncing in the circle. Still loose there. Jam try. No. It's underneath a body. And we got a Hand pass here, RPL will gladly take that. They're not allowed to change, but the puck's out of danger. 9.01 to go, third period, 3-1 to one, Yale on top. Yeah, Savory sprawled out on the ice there. Uh, Babichuk missed the pass, and so Zeke had to go back and play defense. Not what you want, uh, especially when the Smith brothers are flying down together. So 9.01 to go, Bulldogs up 3-1 over RPI. But a uh, good stoppage there for RPI because Savory was way out of position due, due to the initial saves that he had to make. Are they going to look at something? No, I think it's oh. mid-period. Oh, yeah, you're right. Mid-period, 9-1, so this is our first mid-period stoppage. Unless they are, they got no, the door they, open. No, they're going to look at something. I don't know what it could be. And we won't find out. Yeah, they're going in the review box. So. Yeah. I don't know what this could be for. The puck never crossed the goal line, so. As far as you know. Well. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. We got, we got hockey tomorrow night. RPI takes on Brown. Teddy bear toss here in the second air mission. Well, you have a, you have, a you have a teddy bear you're going to bring? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, now that I know, maybe. Maybe, I probably will. Oh. Not to what? Not to, I'm not trying to upstage you at all, Joe. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I might have a bear or two or three to throw on the ice. Well, I wish we knew what they were looking at. Yeah, it, it'd be a little, <laughs> little easier to talk about it, but I. It just says it's official it, reviews. It'd so. be a, it'd be a lot easier to talk about actually. Um, <laughs> but but we don't know it seems like they it's not a little thing are they, are they, they looking at a hit maybe I don't know the only way they can look at a hit but, but could they the only way they can look at a hit is if they would determine it was a, someone could get kicked out of a game I don't remember anything egregious mm. the biggest that I saw was the one that Mashy took on the board yeah there. that was not that was but not it good. wasn't anything it was no. just a clean hit yeah I'm not sure. The RPI fans are trying to find out. They're standing over the glass looking at the <laughs> yeah. referee's uh, scorer's box there. It's coming out. All right. What are they? No, nothing. Okay. They're pointing at the goal and wave, so. No, they pointed at the dot, which is awful close to center ice. <laughs> okay. I think he was pointing where the. No. We have no idea what this was about. Whoa. Yeah. Does anybody know? We're still skating five on five. I'll, I'll ask around discreetly. They have nine minutes to go in this game. Arm guy down by two. If they can get one in the next couple minutes, they can really put the pressure on. We're eventually going to drop the puck here in the RPI zone, hopefully. Mashy to take the draw here against Hall. Engineers come away with it. Off the stick of Linden, back into the RPI zone. A couple of Bulldogs need to touch up. Tipped in deep and over Kaspersky, but he gloves it anyway. Gets a whistle. You are listening to live coverage of RPI Hockey 91.5 FM. WRPI Troy. Shots are 29-20, Engineers. And we'll have another stoppage here on the, I guess, the media stoppage this time. <laughs> Why not? Here they come shovel some snow. So, uh, no change in the score, really. You keep going. I'll, I'll go do some investigative work, Joe. Okay. Well, that'll be exciting. Well, I'm sure everyone's curious to know what exactly what was going on on that last shift there. But 
Uh, now we take the media stoppage for them to clear the ice. As RPI, they really, it's, last couple minutes, it's hard to figure out what the game's going because it's been very dead. Just there hasn't been much play going on on the ice to begin with. So, RPI, they're going to have to jump back in. They're going to have to, if they can get within one, you can get the extra skater out in the last couple minutes and maybe create an opportunity and... Maybe maybe Coach Smith goes six on five a little earlier than usual if they're still down two with like four or five minutes to go because yeah. uh, they're it's it's they they gotta find a way to get past Kaspersky again. All right, well I figured find it out. out. Yeah, yeah, it was it was the hit on Dubinsky. They were looking at to see if it was uh, they were able to expel a player, but no penalty. No. Interesting. Face off coming. Yeah. Engineers uh, dump it in the corner. Ashbrook lost it. Comes free to the near side. Evan Smith clears the center. RPI is being a little more aggressive, sending forwards into the attacking zone. That time it was only Ferner back. He'll lift it back the other way. St. Ivan, he has it now at his own blue line. Sent across to the far side. Ferner chips it up the boards for Ashbrook. Tristan Ashbrook ahead. Moved in by Gornel. Right back out to center it goes. Babichuk. Return feed for Ferner in his own zone. Flipped ahead, bouncing into the Yale zone. Turned back around, played by Babichuk, who makes a move. Babichuk walking in, kicks it to himself, trying to center, is broken up. Now another centering pass all the way through, and picked up by Hallbauer. Hallbauer across into the skates of Babichuk. Pulls it back to the point. Saucer pass back. Hallbauer, wrist shot coming. That one's blocked down. Picked up by uh, Gornel, and he backhanded it wide. Another good chance there. RPI just Gornel on his backhand. Try to use the element of surprise and steer it on goal when he missed the net. Gornel back towards the point. Hands it off for Johnson. Johnson into the slot. Fakes a shot across. Gornel, one-timer! And oh, he put it wide. He had a good portion of the net to shoot at. And he stepped into it, but he wired it wide of the net. No, Hallbauer right on. And a save by Kaspersky. And the engineers are peppering his Yale net right now, but they're unable right so far to get another one past Colin Kaspersky. Yeah, a lot of motion Corbin. there. And I like calling him Colin for some reason. Go ahead. <laughs> I, you got to give Corbin, Kas Corbin Kaspersky credit, credit there. Even Gordel did have a lot, of oper a lot of space to shoot at, but Kaspersky did get over pretty quickly to cover up most of it. So he had to go far side, and he, he ended up going wide. Shot never got to Kaspersky. And now cleared in the air, and... Into the penalty box. 7.13 to go. Shots are 30 to 20 RPI. I gotta apologize for, to Corbin. Keep calling him Colin. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's been superb again, and his career numbers aren't great, Joe. 906 save percentage is nothing to. You know, but against RPI, really I feel like it's up there. Yeah, he <laughs> feels like he's an under goalie against the engineers. Just a reminder, you're listening to live coverage of RPI Men's Hockey on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy. Kaspersky behind his own net, thought about holding it, then he sent it, put it on the ice and tried to play it. Anyway, back to the RPI zone it goes. Stevens leaning on Riley, penalty coming up. Who's it on? Riley, would, we'll see. Riley touched the puck. Savory's down, he got ran into. Yeah, but that was after the play. Who are they going to get? Riley doesn't think it's him because he's going to the bench. They're going to get Stevens? This is a, if you're Stevens, this is a really bad penalty to take. Yeah. Yeah, you're trying to hustle and get on to the end of this puck, but you're deep in the attacking zone, leading by two. And Riley had position. He did. No, That's Riley did a thing. good job Riley of getting his body position. between him and the puck. You're right. The only thing you could think of maybe getting Riley for is potentially holding is he, if he was trying to ward off Stevens, but they're going to get Stevens for a slash. So RPI will go on its second power play. And this one they'll have Will Riley for us. He's out there with Babichuk on, on the blue line. Right, there's no coincidentals here. So an opportunity has arisen for these engineers with 6.53 to go, and they win the draw back to the point. Babichuk up the wall for Mashey. Mashey down low into the skates of Lepinen. Lepinen circle shot way over the top, and Gornel had a little more time than that. You know you're trying to get that shot away quickly, but that puck did not sit for him when he just ripped it up into the netting cleanly. Yeah, just just the 
sort of an impulse thing just flew up into the netting. But uh, leaning on his stick, a little upset because, like you said, he had time. But they were moving the puck well, so go out and get the next faceoff win. Faceoff tapped to the far corner. Tied up was Lindstrand. Taken away. Back to the point. Riley, circle. He likes to shoot from this near side, but usually on a one-timer, where he hands it off now to Babichuk. Far side, circle, it's Mashey. He'll step into a wrist shot. That one's blocked down, cleared to the far side. Babichuk up the board, stolen away by Smith, who clears it down the ice. Smith is a relentless penalty killer, and he's shown you know, great instincts in this game. Lepinen, both Smiths, for that matter, but especially Evan, the captain. Now Riley pulls it back, far circle. Riley walking his way in, wrist shot right on, and a save by Kaspersky, who holds on. You can see Riley just picking up speed there, moving his feet, circling, 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 and able to get in a little bit. But Bulldogs, knowing his strength, not trying to skate man-to-man -man with him, knowing that he's got that those active legs and just kind of sitting back and trying to block the shot. Face off, push to the corner, Kemp to get it, to try and slap it out near side. Jumping on it was Hallbauer. Now tap back to the point. Polino, far point Ferner. Shot in, redirected, and Kaspersky makes the stop, and he holds on again. It was Zeke who was trying to redirect that shot from Ferner. Don't know if he did or not, but if he did, it wasn't enough to you know, confuse Kaspersky. He was able to hold on. Yeah, Zeke's quietly had a pretty good game here tonight for the Engineers. No glaring holes in, in his defensive play, and also creating chances in front of the net. 56 seconds on this RPI power play. And an immediate clearance by Sweezy all the way down. Yale up 3-1 to one with 5.40 left in the third. On come the Engineers. Jumping into the play, Ferner had it broken up the blue line. It should be offside. It was touched. And that's a, a, a good whistle for RPI because not only is Yale not to get to clear, but the clock stops and get an immediate draw here. Yeah. Uh, Yale's actually pretty upset about that because they thought they would you know, have a chance to cut some more time off it and clear the puck, but center ice draw coming. Right in front of the Yale bench will draw things up here at the Houston Fieldhouse. 39 seconds left on the slashing call to Luke Stevens. Faceoff pushed ahead and cleared out, however, by the Bulldogs. Hallbauer skates out of his own zone, hands it off to Burgess. Burgess into the zone, lifts it up the wall. He'll chase it down himself. Behind the goal, Polino continues it around for Ferner. Off his skate, pulls up at the half wall, down low. Here is Patrick Polino up top for Hallbauer. Wrist shot redirected. Oh, a pad saved by Kaspersky. Burgess got a piece of it. And again, the left pad of the senior netminder, Corbin Kaspersky, makes the stop. And now back come the engineers. Hallbauer penalty about to expire. RPI yeah. now 0 for 2 on the power play. As Hallbauer's upended in the corner, takes a look. It doesn't get a call here. Back come the Bulldogs. O'Neill into the zone. Walks around one engineer, but not another, as is broken up by Riley. Will Riley stick handling? He'll try the near side. Up ahead, pass Gornel all the way down. They wave off the icing. Chandler Lindstrand fires it down the middle onto the tape of D'Orsi who shoots it in. And now Riley into the middle, broken up and quickly carried the other way. Three on three, Jerry couldn't corral it at the blue line, is broken up there. And now back come the Bulldogs, Paleko into the zone. He takes a hit and goes down, picked up by Babichuk. He makes a move around one. Babichuk trying to lift it up the boards, trying to find Jerry, he's tied up. And Yale has it once more, under four to go in the third. 3-1 Yale. Sweezy across, quickly ahead from Tobacco into the RPI zone. All the way down low, a centering feed all the way through. Picked up by Mashey on the other side. He wants to skate. Mashey into the zone, makes a move into the far corner. Still Mashey, takes a hit, lost the puck. Picked up there by Kemp. Kemp will lift it in the air down the middle. Looking for Welsh. Too far for him, and icing against the uh, against the Bulldogs. 3.20 to go again. RPI, is, they lead the shots advantage 33-20, so they've created opportunities. They've played, they really, if you look at it, they've 
played well here tonight. It's just been a couple of fluky goals that have snuck by Savory. Uh, I wouldn't even say that Savory's played bad. It's just some weird goals. Yeah, that, maybe the third one he might want back. I didn't see the yeah. reflection, but yeah. So now I, you wonder when they're they're going to try and go up, pull, pull the goal and go uh, up a man. We'll see. A little over three left right now. Bear up the boards, played there by Ashbrook. Oh, he tried to find, or Goral tried to find Ashbrook, rather. Eventually does, and they dump it in. Far side clearing effort, played by Pearson. Pearson ahead, has Johnson with him. Shot comes in from the wall. It's held onto by Savory, and we get another stoppage here. So 3.05 to go. Again, you're listening to live coverage of men's hockey on 91.5 FM. WRPI Troy looks like a timeout's going to be called here by the engineers as they try to draw something up. Uh, certainly, yeah. Uh, Is it a timeout? I think it's just a media stoppage. Okay. I could be wrong. I didn't see anyone signal, though. We'll find out. I just put the timing of it, I thought, maybe. Yeah, it could be. And it looked like... It looked like the the, the cr engineers had kind of made a crowd quickly yeah. when the when the whistle got blown. So I think it's just our final media stoppage, but it could be wrong. Oh, engineers are gonna have to figure out something to draw up here if they want to make the most of this opportunity. Yeah, they need a quick one. That's for sure. Down by two. RPI gets Brown tomorrow. They also, aside from losing five straight to the Bears, or to the Bulldogs, they've lost five straight to Brown, the team they have more wins over than anybody else in school history. So they're going to turn that around tomorrow against the Bears. In their last game of the quote unquote first half of the season. Good outlet pass. Gornel moving in, trying to send it through. Ashbrook went to the net, but the pass just missed him. Played around to the far side corner, clearing effort. Wooding couldn't get it past his man. Second try out to center and all the way down. Rolling puck will help the effort here as Johnson skates down and wins the icing race. Although it was uncontested. 33 to 21 are the shots right now. And now Savory's coming out with 242 left. Yeah. You said first half of the season, but do they have more games than in this after in the second? I think there are more games in the second half. They play 36, I think, or 34. So yes, they, yeah, more in the second half. Uh, Riley, quick shot, save, rebound, loose in front, a clearing effort down the middle. It will roll wide of the goal. The puck was on edge; it could have gone anywhere. But it rolled about a foot and a half wide of the RPI net on the left-hand side. And RPI creates a quick chance there uh, on the man advantage. Riley able to send it in, get a rebound in front. Net was open, but the sticks were cleared away. Face off here, near side of the Yale zone. One back cleanly by the Bulldogs. They'll try and clear it out near side. And a chance to break is three Bulldogs up ice, but Ashbrook takes it away. Keeps it alive for RPI. They'll shoot it in. Bouncing puck to the near side corner. Mashey's tied up there. 2-12 left, an empty net for RPI. Down by a pair. Mashey, three engineers in the corner. Almost four if you count Ferner. Back to the point, and Babichuk can't keep it in the zone. Shot in by Riley again. St. Ivany will try to clear it out quickly on the near side. Kept in by Babichuk this time. Lifted to the far side. Great find. Mashy down low looking for a redirection. Doesn't come off of Babichuk and out to center. Nearly kept that one in as well. RPI touches up and goes right back in on the attack. A minute 39. Lifted in the air to center. Bouncing there. Playing uh, free safety is Babichuk who moves it back in. Mashy drop pass. Gornel near side circle. In front off a of skate. Karam to the far side. Can Ferner keep it in? No. And it's kicked by Gornel. And an offside whistle here. And a tough break. That was just inches from being kept in by Gornel, but he couldn't do it in the or by Ferner, excuse me, but he couldn't do it in the end. Yeah, 122 to go. RPI continuing to press. 
with the man advantage with the man advantage now with the empty net. Uh, but but Bulldogs that really a pretty solid group of penalty killers out there. As you mentioned, the Smith brothers really are ag aggressive and um, willing penalty killers and. RPI came in with the, the second best pe penalty kill in the ECAC, but I wouldn't be surprised if Yale's moved up later in the year. They've looked good tonight. Absolutely. So, 122, and now, now RPI takes his timeout. That, that was a media stop before, but now they use the timeout with a minute 22 to go. Yeah, so they got to find a way to get too quick. So, <laughs> not just. There's, not, no, yeah, there's no two point shots, so. That would be interesting. Hockey with the two-point shot. I don't think I'd Indoor like lacrosse it. has it, doesn't it? Outdoor does. Out, the pro. Outdoor pro. Outdoor lacrosse. pro has a two-point yeah, shot? Yeah, they okay. have a two-point shot. I don't know if indoor does. I thought there was like a, 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 an arc. That's but, They definitely have that in the outdoor pro league. In okay. The, in the, the premier lacrosse with the new Okay, one. they have an outdoor two-point shot? Okay. Yeah, but not in, not in college. Indoor soccer has it. I know that. Really? Pro soccer, yeah. They got the, the, the two-point arc. I feel like it doesn't make sense in hockey because like... A, well, where would you put it at? at like at center ice? I don't, like, know, where, like I don't know where. I don't know where. Shots you put it. come in from the point all the time. Good point. It, it couldn't be in the zone, I guess. Uh oh. One straight back by the engineers, and this is going to miss the goal. That would have been some way for this game to end. Yeah. RPI down by two. Minute twelve to go. Six on five still. They've been that way since 2:42 left in the game. Polino's knocked down. Puck back out to center. Ferner. D to D, Hallbauer back to Ferner. He'll throw up the near side boards. Now ahead comes Burgess. Stick handling into the attacking zone. Knocked off his stick. Broken up there. Burgess gets back on side. Pearson just tossed himself to the ice for some reason. And now Hall, an attempt at the empty net. No, goes wide. Hallbauer gets tripped up in the corner. Moved out by Dubinsky. Ahead for Zeke. They move it in. Four on two now. Zeke across. Dubinsky has shot it again. Kaspersky with the glove. It's been that kind of night for the engineers and Corbin Kaspersky. As he denies the engineers on a close range effort there. Just flashing the weather there. Um, RPI, if, if they keep... Nah, never mind. I was going to say, if they keep it up, they might be able to double the shots advantage, but... A little, late, a little, for that, little late for that, but still pretty close considering yeah. the score. But Kaspersky's been up to the task, and really it's been a credit to him. Ashbrook gets tossed from the dot here. That means Lepinen steps in. He's pretty good on his own. Wins it back cleanly. Gornel, a wrister, save Kaspersky. Loose puck back to the point. Babichuk makes a move. 22 seconds. Gornel again. Up top. Mashy a drive. Save Kaspersky. Rebound! The net gets knocked off. What? And the puck was somewhere. Well, it was under some bodies. Kaspersky eventually found it, but he didn't have it when the whistle went. We know that. He, he's claiming he found it now. <laughs> so, RPI knocking on the door late, but a little bit too little too late, seemingly here. 16.2 left. Another faceoff coming in the Yale zone. It's like the neck got knocked off by Smith. Yeah, that's why the faceoff stays in the zone. Another faceoff here. This time the Bulldogs win it. Tap it to the corner. Played by Gornel. Gornel back to the point. No, goes behind the goal. Knocked down by Sweezy. Seven to go to the point. Babichuk throws it to an open point. And with three seconds, a shot at the empty net. And they got it with less than a second to go. It's four to one. And a goal by Mitchell Smith is third of the season. And... An unnecessary empty net goal, but one just the same. Caps this one off officially 2.2 seconds on the clock when they tally that one. Uh, I guess it's all about those points for, the, <laughs> for some of these guys. Well, I don't know anyone in their right mind that doesn't take that shot, so I'm not, <laughs> not going to blame them. I'm just saying. Yeah, point two. For how this game went, it's going to look much, much worse than it actually played out. Anyway, RPI falls here. To 5-9 and 1 overall. They're 2 5 and 1 in the league. The Bulldogs pick up their third win overall, third win in the conference. They're 3 and 7 on the season and 3 and 6 in league play. A tough loss for RPI. They probably figure they have as good a chance as any to win this game, but could yeah. not get any uh, past Kaspersky aside from the one they did get. And they fall here 4 to 1. 
Yeah, and I believe that now RPI will fall behind Yale in yep. the standings. It's still a little bit early to talk about standings, but yeah, you're right. It's never too early to talk about standings. Some, no, no, Joe, this is too early to talk about standings. It's too early to talk about the pairwise. It's too early to talk about standings. Um, but yes, they, they, they do fall behind. I believe you're right. Yeah, so RPI, obviously, it's not like they played terrible tonight. Just a couple of fluky, fluky goals, especially in the first period that Yale was able to get. Um, they had, but yeah, they took advantage of a, a couple of power plays that the injuries got caught up on the rush a couple of times. Yeah, yeah RPI trying to go. Uh, they had a short, two short-handed opportunities where, any, and you kind of look at it. If one of them goes in, it's a one-one game or two-one game flip the other way so RPI shouldn't be hanging their heads they should be coming back ready for action tomorrow night against Brown another team that they've had trouble with as of recent uh, because it's they they really if you look at all the statistics 37 shots on net to 21 for the Bulldogs they outshot them they they certainly had the puck longer than them they had periods where they were just hounding in the offensive zone just skating with the puck and circling around uh, so they it's they can't be upset with how they with how they play but maybe learn how to finish a little more work on some I'm not sure exactly how you practice that but work on finishing your shots yeah so Take it in tomorrow night, trying to end their drought against the Brown Bears. Uh, now a three-game losing streak. Five against the Brown, five against six yeah. now against Yale. I mean, on the season. Oh yeah, games. this is their first three-game losing streak of the year. You're right. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing it's their first one. Correct. Bad thing that it exists. <laughs> um, as we'll run down the scoring, a power play goal by Dante Paleco in the first in the. Excuse me, second period, it, it was a power play goal assisted by Kevin O'Neill and Corbin Kaspersky. So Kaspersky not only playing well in net tonight, but also picking up a point on the year does the goalie, does the Yale netminder. Second goal came, again came on the power play, this one by Justin Pearson, assisted by Phil Kemp and Jack St. Ivany. Um, that came at 13.22 of the second period. Then RPI, just at the end of the second period, made it 2-1 on a goal by Jacob Waka, his first of the season, assisted by Zach Dubinsky, who was in the lineup for the first time in four games, and by Chase Zeke as well at 19.42 of the second period. So RPI fans, if you have a ticket, go out and get your Fremo's tacos. And then the... Next, Yale. The next goal was in the third at 1:40 of a third period by Luke Stevens. Not a power play goal, an even strength goal, assisted by Hayden Rowan and Kevin O'Neill. And then the empty netter at 19:59 by Evan Smith, the senior captain for the Yale Bulldogs. So that runs down the scoring. Uh, offensive and defensive engine, the engineers of the game. Offense, it's going to go to Jacob Blocka for getting his first goal in in uh, several uh, several games and uh, his first of the season as well. On defense, I think the uh, the defensive ends in the engineer of the game is going to go to. We'll give it to TJ Samick. I thought he did a pretty good job of not making, he was the third defensive pairing in the lineup tonight, uh, but he was the, excuse me, he was the extra defenseman in the lineup tonight, but he did a pretty good job just keeping, clearing the puck, keeping it out of the, in front of Savory, and um, just doing an overall good job of defensive play. So, we will uh, conclude here again, the final score after the game was RPI 4, or excuse me, Yale 4, RPI 1. They'll be back tomorrow night against Brown. Again, you're listening to live coverage of RPI Men's Hockey on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy. Uh, we'll get a few more scoring updates from basketball uh, before we close out tonight. Um, 